Let's go to Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. And I believe there is a word from the Lord on this beautiful day. Amen. As the weather decides to kind of show its face, we didn't know whether to put boots on or coats on. Or, and then you look up round one, it's going to get hot. And then <laughs> some of us feel like we're about to pass out. Amen. So um, I don't think Atlanta really gives you a really good winter because you'll put on a coat and then have to take it off because when that sun comes out, you'll feel warm. Amen. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, those who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, this season of my life is called performance. Go say it to somebody else. This season of my life is called performance. You may be seated in heavenly places. Amen. Amen. Listen, we do understand in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the word that's about to come forth. Holy Spirit, help us, move us out of the way. Any distractions by the enemy that would try to stop and block the word of God from coming forth, we bind you, we cast you out, we silence you, we plead the blood of Jesus over every ear. And Lord God, that we may take this word and run with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Help us, Holy Spirit. Amen. I do understand that there are seasons, and I do understand the Bible talks about lifetime. There's a scripture that says there is a lifetime of favor, that God won't just give you favor here and there, but he'll give you a lifetime of favor. So if anybody comes to you and say, you're in the season of favor, you guys are, mm, I don't receive that, because God said he gives me a lifetime of favor. Seasons end. So that means if you quote that I'm in a season, it ain't going to last long. But we do understand this word called process, that some people are being processed, meaning that you may be in a season, but it's not going to be there for so long. And so don't get discouraged because God put seasons there for a reason. But as a born again, born again believer, there are some promises that the Bible has given us that you have to understand that we are above certain seasons. That means you are not blessed only in certain seasons. You're blessed every day. It doesn't take a season for God to bless you. As a born-again believer, if you read Deuteronomy 28, the Bible says you are supposed to be blessed every day. Your hands are supposed to be blessed. That means whatever your hands touch, you supposed to, it's supposed to be blessed. That means even if you don't have a house and you are sharing with someone as a born-again believer, that person's house will be blessed if they're not a believer. See, people look at material things and they think that's all to life, that you are blessed because you have a house. You are blessed because you have a car. There are unbelievers that have all that stuff. There are people that don't even know God that have all that stuff. But there are some people that the Bible says, um, it was a lady in the Bible, her name was called Myra, which meant bitter because she was bitter from the things that happened to us. God is not doing anything bad to us if you understand new covenant, new covenant with God. It's life that is testing us. It is the devil that is doing crazy things to us, but we can overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. If you are in trouble, get ready. You're about to overcome it. If you are born again, believer, you're going to overcome. It don't matter if it's just starting or you in the middle of it, it, you're going to overcome. If some ushers can help them, I think they're looking for somewhere to sit. Amen. But you have to understand that you are an overcomer and God wants you to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony to not sit around thinking, woe is me. I'm going to be stuck in this thing for so long. No, as a born again, a believer, Believer, things will happen to you. But there's a promise by God that you will overcome the attacks. You will overcome the uh, 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 things that the enemy is throwing your way. But as a believer, there are some benefits that you carry as a believer. 
So wake yourself up. Stop beating yourself up. Well, I'm not blessed because I don't have material things. The material things will come if you stick with God. Matter of fact, the Bible says you won't even have to run after those things. If you continue to seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness, he said, I'll make blessings run after you. I didn't know that could happen. Yes, it can in the Bible. The Bible says, if you keep praising me, I'll make people favor you for no reason at all and make it run after you. I'll make, do you know God will make people run after you? He'll make blessings chase you. Oh, you don't believe it. Psalms 23 said his goodness and his mercy shall what? Follow me. That means good news is about to follow me. Not bad news, not evil news. Good things about to follow me. As a believer, good things supposed to follow you, not bad things following you. And sometimes the only reason bad things are following us is because we have accepted a lie from the devil. You do know the devil would knock at your door to see, will you tolerate him? You can't stop him. That's something that hurt my feelings when I first got uh, uh, saved. I would beg my husband, please, please tell me is another way out. I'm sorry, as a born again believer, you can't stop attacks. No matter how much I fast, you can go on a 21 day fast, <laughs> but you can't stop some attack. And then, you know, I had to preach uh, at a revival this Friday and the pastor got up and the pastor said something that was so amazing. He said that you do know there are certain attacks you can't even pray, again, uh, pray away because it was allowed. Ooh. No matter how much, if you are in a place right now, and this is not that God is doing this to you, but there are certain things that... And I don't know how to say this without somebody getting mad at God, because this is why I had to sit down. And thank God I was married to a preacher because he was sometimes he would try to wonder, did you marry me because you love me or you marry me because I can answer all your Bible questions. <laughs> I was I look, I took advantage of that thing. I was like, look, since you know this Bible, you're walking Bible. Now tell me why this happening. Why this happening? Why do people get killed? Why da, 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 da? And, he, and he knew it. I mean, this boy, is a man is a walking. And see, sometimes you get common with your husband. So, you know, I have to remember that he has a mantle on his life. And so I can't get too common with him. But that at those times, he would help me, help me through certain harsh questions that I had about God. But I want to get this so you won't get angry with God. Um, why are there certain attacks that I can't pray against? Let me say this just to say it. The Bible says you will reap what you sow. That's a law. So it, no matter what you try to do, if you don't sow correctly, you won't reap correctly. If you don't like the results you're seeing, you're going to have to change what you are doing. Sometimes we have to have a wake-up call. And so the Bible says the prodigal son, he left his daddy and went out on this pursuit of trying to have the world and, and see what the world was like and, and, and see all this, the lust of the eye, the lust of the eye and the pleasures of life. And the Bible says his daddy didn't bother him, let him do it. And the Bible says after he lost everything, he came to him, his senses. Sometimes you got to leave people along and let them come to their senses. Now, God is powerful. He can easily snatch that person out of their storm. But because he's a good father, no matter how much you try to pray for that baby, God knows he got to go through what he's going through. If not, he would never learn the lesson. That's what we talked about. Some storms are, are, are storms where you, no matter how much you pray, until you learn the what? Lesson. It will go away. But did you get it? Did you get it this time? Because when I'm being attacked, the first thing I drop to my knees and ask, did I, Lord, what do I need to learn? What do I need to learn? It's something I need to learn. Because let me tell you something. You heard that sermon at the Upper Room Conference. That man said, the, the preacher said, listen, I keep saying that man said, I, I hope I'm not offending anyone. But the preacher said, he said, listen, if Jesus is sleeping, and he can do anything, and you are worrying, that should get you to notice that there's something you need to learn. 
So there are certain storms God immediately, if you know this, if you know your God, God can immediately stop it. But why isn't he? It's because maybe you need to learn patience. Have you, have you met them self-righteous people? You've been saved for five years now and everybody is a hell and everybody is no good and everybody's beneath you and nobody can arise to where you are. But then God got to let you experience some hardship with your children. Not my child. Yes, your child is going through, taking you through hell. So you mean tell me God is putting this on me because of, no, 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 I'm not saying God did that, but because the way life is, if you don't see the enemy coming in, sometimes God got to say, let me, let me just back back because the devil is right there. You go to church every Sunday, but you can't even see the devil is right here. But you think you all that in a bag of chips. I don't need to come to service. Oh, Pastor Finn, I start two services. I don't need but one because I'm so bad. Let me tell you something. Let hell hit folks like there'll be, listen, it'll be a line out there waiting to get into this place. God knows how to bag back out of our lives and say, let me, I know how to get you to me. Don't worry about, listen, no marketing, no flyer can get people to church. Sometimes people have to go and experience what the prodigal sons went through. They got to come to their senses. Oh, it's my education. Oh, it's me. Listen, it's not you. And then soon as the person you worship on your job start ignoring you, that's when you bust your behind here at the church. I'm tired of the rejection, God. I'm tired of being overlooked. I'm tired of climbing the ladder of success and no, nobody, nobody noticed me. It's a reason. God is, God is like, I'm going to see how long you try to walk this walk to see. Because let me tell you something. If you want to hang with the world, you better realize there's some stuff you're going to have to compromise to do. I don't care how much you say I'm a Christian and all this. Some of you are guilty by association. Well, I don't do what they do, but you still roll with them. So you have to understand that who you hang around determines who you are. Well, that's my good old friend from, Con listen, you don't have to literally make people uh, put their storms on you and their uh, 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 attitudes on you. If you know you don't do it, you got to understand the Bible says a good name is better than all this other stuff. Protect your name. And I'm telling you, I didn't know. So when I was younger, I want everybody to be happy. When I started getting, little, I just turned 40. Now I'm starting to see, I don't care what folks think. If I know you, I know you. Come on, we cool, we cool. If not, come on. You got to understand, people will make you sick and then they'll go live their life and acting like, oh, and listen, people will do you dirty and act like a victim. <laughs> but you the one hurt me. You the one hurt me. And they be, you did something. No, you did something to me. <laughs> So you have to understand, you know, um, I, when I was starting preaching, I was so excited that people would give me preaching engagements and, oh, I was so excited. So people would ask, oh, can I take a picture with you? Can I take a picture with you? And I would take pictures and I didn't know. And so I didn't know about protecting your name, meaning you can't put everything on your social media page. You are guilty by association. So this person asked to take a picture with me, and she was so kind to me. She was so kind to me. She said, I just, you like my idol. You know, the devil like to flatter you. <laughs> Flattery will get you in trouble. So she was flattering me. She was like, oh, you just, you know, oh, I love Jackie Fleming. I just love Jackie Fleming. Da, 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 da. And it's nothing wrong with giving honor, but flattery is a little too much, all right? So she tagged me on social media. And I said, should I put this on my page? Because you just got to be careful when you're a leader, what you put on your page. Mind you, at this particular time, I'm dealing with a lady that is getting delivered from homo, well, is it homosexual? Well, she's, she's liking girls. So we're going through the process with her, and she's starting to get delivered. And she finally got delivered, and she, she, now she can trust me is a safe place. Why? Because she got hurt from leaders. Y'all don't want to hear this. So what I'm trying to say is it was somebody that was a leader that tainted her in the name of the Lord. Amen? So she found a safe place in me.
But mind you, the enemy is always lurking because he wants to rip us to pieces. And so here I am preaching and the girl tags me. And it's so funny. I was wondering, should I share this on my page? I shared it because I was in that place of just trying to be nice. Did not know that this person I shared was, uh, she was a leader as well, but she was like in the same sex. And so she was doing a lot of flattery to see was I like that. Not knowing that the Lord had given me an audience of so many women that I'm now a Moses, a deliverer. And I got to be careful what I do because now the blood is on my hands. And I can lead somebody astray. So she stopped talking to me and I didn't know what was wrong. Then she sent, she sent me an inbox. She said, um, I don't know, but I got a little afraid when I saw you post the same person who turned me out. You shared her on your page. And I thought I could trust you. Had no idea. And I'm just, but that was the devil used the girl to flatter it. She said, because she knew that the, she didn't know, but the demons in her knew she is close to the one that is about to get free. Do you see it's a small, it's a big world, but it's a small world. And the spirit realm knows what's going on. And so she said, I watch your ministry and I know you're not like that. But you shared that person on your page, which means you gave validation to the lifestyle. And so are you like that? Or, you know, da, 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 da. I said, no. So she finally called me and told me the whole story. Come to find out, these are the ones that turned her out. And they have been following my ministry, but flattering me. But mind you, as a Christian and a, a, a minister, you don't, want, you, know, you don't want to put shame on people. You want to love everybody. You don't want to love everybody. But that's when I saw you are guilty by association. And if you don't take a stand, somebody, it will literally kill themselves because they're saying, listen, everybody in this Christian walk ain't real. Come on, somebody. Do you know how this person violated me and did this? And this person was their armor bearer. We don't supposed to talk about this on Sundays. And when it was hurt, listen, you, I'm glad Pastor seen you not, not like that. But the crazy thing about it is, these armor bearers was told at a certain time, were well, you supposed to come to my house and clean my house and all the da 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 And it was her turn, and that's where she, they was trying to turn her out at the house because she had to spend a night. So the thing about it is she walks in her freedom now and all this stuff and all this stuff. But the thing about it is, as a leader, you can't be nice just being nice. You'll know what the enemy is trying to do behind the scenes. All because you want to be connected. All because you glad that you, you know, people like you. And you, you better be careful because this gospel is not about your name. It's about the name of the Lord. Are you ready for leadership? <laughs> Are you ready? Because the enemy is lurking to see. If you read, that's why, you know, uh, the Bible says don't put a novice in position. Is that to say you're never ready? No. Have you been tried and tested? Because people are going through crazy stuff outside of these four walls. And they need realness to tell you, listen, we not playing games with no devil. Amen. If, you, if God wants to set you free, you'll be free indeed. But let me tell you something. I'm not perfect, but make sure your hands are clean. If you're going to walk this walk, you got to talk the talk. And you have to understand that people are dealing with stuff behind the scenes. And listen, you have to be sensitive to the spirit of God, what is going on. And so the Bible says that you have to understand that there are different seasons in their life, um, lifetimes that he do things in our lives. And you have to understand as a believer that don't be impressed by material things. You as a believer carry... Uh, 
uh, the blessings of God. And because you are blessed, others are blessed. Because you stand on the word, your life will witness to somebody else. Somebody is right now doubting whether the word of God is real or true. But if you don't open your mouth, they'll say, well, I guess I'll stick with what I'm doing. You are a walking Bible. People watch your life. You know, when I uh, first got saved, I didn't know people really look at things. They really, really look. They watch stuff. So we would have Monday night. Um, Pastor had started Monday night ministry. And that's where we started answering the tough questions. We would, would let people ask questions and we would preach from it and answer it. And one lady answered a question. She would say, I noticed on certain Sundays, certain people come and certain Sundays people don't come. And what is going on? And da -da -da -da. These are new believers are frustrated. And you have to answer those tough questions. And as simple as this, it's either do people love God or they love people. And so if you don't train people right, they'll start learning how the older ones did it. That's why you have to have the examples in place. Why? Because all the devil is doing is he, the Bible says he doesn't attack at the beginning. He sits back and watch and then he starts training up the next generation. We're watching how they do it. How do you handle it? If I share something with her, if I share something with the leader, I want to know, will you tell my business all over the place? Why? Because all this going to do is if the younger generation sees it and they don't see anything happen, oh, then that's how it's supposed to be done. Then we continue generational curses and not generational blessings. But God is a God that he doesn't want anyone to perish. So he will raise up people that say, listen, I, I am here to set a standard. I don't care if this one don't do it right, I'm going to do it right. I don't care if this one don't want to stand for what God. Sometimes you are put in certain situations, not because it's popular, but it's to stand for Jesus. Nobody in your family want God, but God got you there. Why? Because you're going to make sure. They're going to be like, oh, you coming to the cookout? I'm going to be right at that cookout. Oh, but you the holy road. Oh, I'm there because you don't know. I, my, the prayers of a righteous person is sanctifying them. Now, listen, they can do the lecture side. You're doing it too. Come on, somebody. You, yeah, yeah, drop it a little bit. And you come back up a little bit nicely. Because they watching you. And they're like, okay, they still got the drop. And, you know. They ain't missing a beat no more. But I want to let them know I'm going through in my marriage. And see, people will fake the phone, but they really going through. And they see your joy. They see your peace. They see you still smiling. And then eventually they end up understanding, I need God. My mom called me the other day. And she hadn't been to church. And I told mama, I said, mama, watch the video. I'm going to be talking about you. She said, oh, it's fine, it's fine. She hadn't been to church in years. And she said, Jackie, I don't know why God is telling me to go. She's been going every Sunday. And this has been amazing testimony for me because I, I'm believing God that all of my family will be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and live for God. And she said something to me on the phone. She said, I am the one that's going to have my grandchildren Knowing who God is. The, the mother may not go. The father may not go. But my grand, listen, listen, you have done your best in your children. But now your assignment is to go for them grandchildren. Glory be unto God to make sure that somebody in my seed will know God. She said, now I know why I'm here. It's for the children. It ain't got nothing. To, come on. You have to be the one that introduced. This is what the family does. This is what we tolerate. And this is what we don't tolerate. So the Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. And the reason I say this is a season because there are seasons that you are being processed. There are seasons that you are coming out. There are seasons that you are being mowed. There are seasons that you cannot act like a baby. That God is saying this is the time that you're going to grow up. And you're going to learn what God is telling you to do. And so you got to become strong. This is a season where you learn how to fight. Meaning you're not going to be in this thing too long. But this is a season that God is placing upon many of us that you're going to see God perform his works in your life 
Meaning you will see a performance. You will see what you believe in God for and he will perform it. He will complete it. He will do it in your life. And the Bible says right here that as the word of God says this, he begins to sing unto me yesterday as I begin to pray. He says, all that you need, it can happen right now. Oh, well, I believe in God that it's going to happen next year. The Lord said it's going to happen right now. I release an anointing that's in this place that what you're believing God for, sometimes it takes years, sometimes it takes a month. But for us, the Lord says it's going to happen right now. It blew my mind when my mama said, oh, I've been going every Sunday. What, it, what happened for me? It happened right now. He didn't have to wait all that he did it then. Glory be unto God. That's what the Lord wants to say unto you. And so when the Bible says they who know their God, somebody said they who know their God. Do you know him? Do you know who God is? Do you know how powerful God is? Do you know what he can do? Do you know how strong he is? Do you know of him as a deliverer? Do you know who God is? Do you know? The Bible says they who know their God shall be strong. The reason you're weak is because you don't know your God. My God, God had to rebuke me this, with this scripture. This is one scripture I quote every day because the Bible begins to tell me. He said, they who know their God shall be strong. And God said, Jackie, why are you weak? And the reason you're weak is because you don't know me. The reason you're sad because you don't know me. The reason you're complaining is because you don't know me. How is it that you say I don't know you? And I go to church and I'm preaching. He said, well, if you're preaching and then you know me, then your life shall produce great exploits. That's when I saw I have limited God to my thinking. Some of you have limited God to your bank account. Some of you have limited God to your reality. And God says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Even if you think it, God said, go higher, go higher, go higher. That's why when I sow, if I see 20, I'll do 40. Why? Because God's ways are not. Listen, my thoughts cannot compare to God. He's a way of, ahead of me. He's way in advance of me. Why? Because he says, listen, you got to come up. Somebody say, I'm coming up. They who know their God. If you know him, you wouldn't be weak. Why? Because I, he said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. I've been redeemed from this pain. I've been redeemed from poverty. I've been redeemed from sickness. Even if sickness touched my body, you got to get out of me in the name of Jesus. Why I've been redeemed. The Bible said Jesus took my sickness. So I drive it out in Jesus' name. Why am I carrying this pain when God took it away from me? They who know their God shall be strong. So the reason you keep complaining is because you don't know God. The reason you keep complaining about your bills, you don't know Matthew. Well, the Bible says, why are you like the Gentiles that complain about what you're going to eat? You complaining about what you're going to wear. The Bible says, worldly people think about that kind of stuff. But they who know their God know that it's already done in the name of Jesus. That means it got to find me. What God has for me, it must locate me. Listen, the earth is the Lord's. Why are you sitting around here? Come on, getting mad because he won't open the door for you. The earth is the Lord's. Somebody got my yes. You've been hearing no. The reason you're hearing no, because you're not in the right environment. But if you keep sticking with God, you say, I, I, come hell or high water, I'm not giving up. Come hell or come high water, I'm not giving up. You will see God show up. They who know their God, they are strong. They are strong. So if I don't know God, I'm weak. I, I didn't come to hurt you. I come to activate you <laughs> because this is how God spoke to me. He said, if you are weak, that means you don't know my power. 
then he, he woke me up. He said, oh, it's not that they don't know me. Some of them forgot about me. It's not that they don't know me. It's some of them have gotten distracted by the enemy. Come on, somebody. And you let the devil's voice be louder in your ear than God's voice. And that's the reason you're tolerating what you're tolerating right now. It's because it's not that you don't know God. It's what you have focused on. So you have magnified your sickness more than God. You have made your pain bigger then God's word and his promises. He's a promise keeper. Glory be unto God. He can, come on, the Bible says, I'm the one that lifts some up, some up and something and I put down some. You have to understand that when you know what the word says, you will be strong. So that's why you're complaining. Because your mind hasn't been renewed. Go and renew your mind. Listen, I tell people, go get your mind renewed before you go in prayer. What you mean? I just jump. I don't jump in prayer. Listen, I pray 5 o'clock in the morning. Listen, before I even start at 5, at 4, I'm already getting out unbelief. I'm not perfect because sometimes I'll get up and I'm doubting God and I'm stressing over this. But then that scripture will pop up in my head. They who know their God shall be strong in the Lord. So once I start knowing him, that's when the strength, not Jackie Fleming's strength, but the strength of the Lord, not your strength. I know you weak, that's why you need the power of God. I know you are feeling sick, that's why you need the power of God to make it in these end times. Somebody say, I know him. I know him to be a deliverer. I know him to be a, come on, a way maker. I know him. The reason I'm touching her, because she know what God can do in some uncomfortable situations. Somebody say, I know him. I know him to be a way maker. I know, somebody say, I know God. They ain't no doubting me no more. They ain't no doubting no more. I know him. I know him. God know how to find me. You can be in the back of the room and God will send an angel to make sure you not leave this building without receiving what the power of God wants for you to have. Somebody say, I know him. I know him. You can make me doubt him. I know too much about him. You can make me doubt him because I know too much about And some of you want to give up because you didn't see it. Come on, the enemy. There's one devil holding your blessing back. And you're going to let that one devil make you doubt him. You can't make me doubt him because he did it for me last year. And he's doing it for me this year. You can't make me doubt him. I got history with God. Somebody say, I got history. I got history. I got history with God. I got history. He done did so much for me that I can lose my mind and worship right now. Because I got history with God. He said, they who know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. What are exploits? That means if you know God, exploits are amazing results. Somebody say amazing results. When you know God, you do amazing results. That means you have an amazing husband. You got an amazing wife. Come on, somebody. You got an amazing career. You got an amazing church. You got amazing children. Uh-huh. That's why folks are jealous of you. Because you know, you know your God. Hallelujah. Because what's on you rub off on them. Y'all don't want to hear me in here today. Y'all eight mans are too weak. Those clapping is are too weak. Because when you know God, what's on you rub off on the next They're going to do amazing things. I'm going to do amazing things. Hallelujah. I'm going to produce amazing results. So what God is saying is you getting ready to walk in, in the supernatural. You will do supernatural things. Your life will be supernatural. Hallelujah. The way God heal you will be supernatural. 
Listen, if you can explain all your blessings, you really don't even understand the grace of God. Because this next generation, this next people that I'm getting ready to bless, you won't be able to explain how I'm getting ready to bring you out. God says, what I'm getting ready to do in your life, when people say, how did you get the house? I don't even know how I got it. All I know is God did it. How did you get out of that situation? I don't even know how I came out of this. All I know is God, he brought me a mighty long way. Somebody said, I don't even know. Look at your neighbor and encourage them. I don't even know how he going to do it, but all I know is done. I don't even know how he going to do it. Can you... I don't even know how he gonna do it, but I know it's already done. I don't even know how my body is gonna get healed, but I stand in the prophetic anointing today and I declare it's already, somebody say it's already done, it's already done. I don't know how he gonna do it, but it's already done. People are going to come up to you and say, how are you going to get the house? I don't know, but it's going to be by the grace of God. Hallelujah. People are going to say, how are you going to get married? Hallelujah. After going through that divorce, all I know is it's already done. Somebody say, and it can happen right now. Hallelujah. How crazy is your faith? That, hallelujah. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. Come here, Jeremiah. Come on. I'm, I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. Come here, Jeremiah. Come on. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. And see, when Jesus was healing one person, his focus was on this person. But the woman with the issue of blood says, I don't care if Jesus is touching Jeremiah. I'm crazy enough to believe that it's my turn as well. You can sit down. Hallelujah. You got to be like the woman with the issue of blood. I know it's not my season, but I'm going to make it my season. I know it's not my turn, but I'm going to make it my turn. I know it's not See, your blessing was supposed to come next year, but you got to be crazy enough to say it's my time. And it can happen right now. It can happen right now. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? The woman with the issue of blood, that lady said, I got to press my way. I've been in this pain too long. I've been sick too long. I've been in this place too long. You got to get desperate enough and say, it's my time. The Bible says, Jesus stopped. He stopped praying for this one person. He looked back. He said, who touched me? Can your praise touch Jesus today? Can your worship touch Jesus? Can your worship touch Jesus today? Can your hallelujah touch Jesus today? Can your worship touch Jesus today? Who touched me? Who touched me? It's going down in history. Hallelujah. In October, that there were some radical people that touched the hymn of God, that touched God with their worship, and they saw unusual miracles. Somebody praise the Lord right there. See, I didn't, sometimes you don't have to wait for permission. You got to learn when that word is for you, you got to be crazy enough. Hallelujah. And say, listen, I know it's not. Hallelujah. Time to praise God, but I'm praising him for my children. I know it's not time to go on a radical praise, but my child needs this. My marriage needs this. My body needs this. And God will say, who touched me this morning? Never restrict God with your thinking. With God, all things are possible. He said, he said, since you hollered at, with God, all things are possible. Something good is about to come out of this. Something amazing is about to come out of your situation. Something great. Ah, somebody get that woman back there. She about to lose it. I need y'all coming. We're going old school church. Y'all better circle around her. There are angels of the Lord that's around that lady giving her a supernatural testimony. All things are possible. And when you, when you know your God, 
something great is going to come out of this. Just look at somebody and say, something good is going to come out of this. I ain't talking about giving up. I ain't talking about killing myself. Last year, I used to do that. Come on. Last year, you used to talk about giving up. Last year, you would talk about throwing in time. But this time, I believe something good is going to come out of this mess. And while you're here, he's opening up doors. While you're here, he's, oh, he's whispering, I, I release the angels of the Lord to whisper in the boss's ear. Ah, favor him, favor her. Oh my God. The Lord says, I'm favoring you in the city. I'm favoring you in the fields. I'm favoring you in other countries. I'm favoring you financially. I'm favoring you, says the spirit of the Lord. I want to prophesy just to a few. You are not powerless. You're powerful. Oh, that's why the devil been attacking you. You're not powerless. You're powerful. And that's why the enemy only attacks who he fears. So your assignment today is to push through the pain. Push through the pain. Push through the pain. Push through how it looks. Push through the pain in the name of Jesus. So the Lord says, I'm about to perform some things in your life. And so when you know me, you become strong. But if you don't know me, you'll stay weak. If you don't know me, you will stay complaining. Because you don't know. Listen, the only reason you're complaining is because you don't know. You don't know that he can do anything. You don't know that the Lord, G G the Bible says when, when the disciples woke Jesus up off the boat, the Bible says Jesus rebuked the storm. I need some of you crazy believers to rebuke that devil. Hallelujah. That's been tormenting your children. That's been tormenting you for years. Hallelujah. In your financial area, that's been tormenting you in the name. Of, I rebuke you off of me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Then the next thing Jesus did was silence the devil. That's right. That's right. He said, stop it. stop it. Stop it. Whatever manifestation of evil that is tormenting the people of God today, you know who you are. You're in here. That foul spirit that follows you. Stop it. Leave them. Go now. Get out of their mind. Stop tormenting them now. Leave now in the name of Jesus. Listen, spirits know who, who, who they know, they know, and they respond. You heard the Bible. You heard the sermon last week. Even the storm can respond to Jesus. Uh, I was in a financial storm. And I remember that scripture that even storms can respond to Jesus. Hallelujah. And all I know was I was praying all kind of prayers and it didn't work. But that scripture popped up in my head. How Jesus silenced the devil and by just saying stop it. And I looked at that spirit and I say, in the name, listen, if you can't do it in your name, do it in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, stop it, devil. Stop it. And I looked and everything became like I saw the, open, the windows of heaven open and I saw rain. I saw supernatural rain. What I'm talking about, everything that was held up from me, it, become, it, become, it, it started being released in the name of Jesus. Then Jesus said, peace, be still. I speak peace over you today. I speak peace over you today. Those of you that know that God is about to perform some things, I want you to lift your right hand and I want you to speak this over your mind, my, out, out of your mouth because death and life is in the power of your tongue. I want us to do this together. Won't you all just come close? Just come close. Just walk down and come close. I want you to come down. Yes, just come down. And I want you to decree. Yes, stand. Yeah, make a, yeah. We're good right there. Amen. Come, come. Amen. You can fill this area up. Lift your hands as you come down. 
The enemy is only fighting you because he fears you. So you, if it's a fight the enemy looking for, then it's a fight he gonna get. Oh, we not nobody that's gonna give up. So if you fight me because you fear me, then if it's a fight you're looking for, then it's a fight you're gonna get. Lift your hands. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I want you to open your mouth and begin to say these declarations over your mouth, out of your mouth, because the angels of the Lord is going to begin to start working for you supernaturally as you speak, because you're gonna push through the pain in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and say, God has placed me on this earth Hallelujah. To occupy land and I shall occupy it. God has placed me on this earth to rule and I shall rule. Show me my area where I shall rule at. God has placed me on this earth to run a race I'm going to run it I'm going to complete it God has placed grace upon me I must access it I must access it in the name of Jesus as you lift your hands now those places in your life where you felt weak the Lord says you're about to become strong I release the angels of the Lord that makes men strong that makes men strong Lord those who came in here weak today in the name of Jesus I declare by the fire in the blood of Jesus that they will go out of here strong in the name of Jesus that they will leave out of here strong in the name of Jesus and the Lord says you will know who I am hallelujah you will not second guess me you will not doubt me you will not second guess my power you will not second guess my healing ability you will not second guess my protection you will not second guess Hallelujah. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to open doors for you. I'm going to heal you by the power in the blood of Jesus. He said, and it's going to happen right now. 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 God says, put it on your mind right now. What you need me to do? And he said, it's going to happen right now. It's going to happen right now. By the power of God, it can happen right now. It's happening right now. Not tomorrow. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hear the word of the Lord. It's happening right now. Your breakthrough is happening right now. Your body is being healed now. Your body is being healed now. Somebody shout, it's happening now. It's happening now. It's happening now. Can I get the praise team to come up here? It's happening now. Hallelujah. I want y'all to sing that prophetically. It's happening now. It's going to happen right now. It's going to happen right now. My body is being restored right now. The deaths are being canceled right now. It's happening now. God is going to do it right now. It's happening now, it's happening now, it's happening. Come on, open your mouth.
you to tell God thank you for what he has done. Tell God thank you for what he is about to do. Tell God thank you. I want you to lift your mouth, lift your voice, lift your voice and tell him thank you. I want to thank you in advance for the open doors. I want to thank you in advance for the supernatural healing. Some of you don't even think you need it, but God says, I'm doing a heart surgery. Ah, that I both so. Some of you don't even think you need it, but God says, hallelujah, I'm silencing that attack that literally behind the scenes over your life. Tell God, thank you in advance. Tell him, thank you. Because it's happening right now. Come on, tell them thank you. Because it's happening right now. Come on, tell them thank you. Because yeah. it's breakthrough, it's breakthrough happening right now. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by the power of God. In the name of Jesus. The Lord just shifted some things for you. And we thank you in advance that my season of frustration is over. I have just moved in a season of performance. Performance, 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 performance. What do you think performance means? It's done. You're gonna see the Lord work this thing out. 
and if man won't help me God says I'll raise up a stranger y'all better bless God in here no man can stop God when you know your God you will walk out of here knowing the strength of the Lord because it's happening because it's happening right now by the fire and the blood of Jesus every hand is lifted Father we thank you for the word today we thank you that there's nothing too hard for God. We thank you that you're giving our family a testimony. You're giving this church a testimony. We thank you, Lord God, that our situation is no longer, hallelujah, denied, delayed. But we thank you, Lord God, that the enemy has been rebuked. We thank you, Lord God, that the enemy has been silenced. We thank you, Lord God, that now we have learned to magnify God more than we magnify our praying. The enemy is defeated and God is exalted. And we praise God right now in Jesus' name. Somebody clap, clap your hands right there. Come on, clap your hands right there. Come on, clap your hands right there. Oh, it's, it, it, it's, some, it's some, some crazy testimonies about to come. Amen. As I give you the benediction, I want you to know that when you start feeling like complaining, remind yourself, that's because I don't know him. Go renew your mind quickly. Because once you know what God can do, you will begin to see the Lord answer your, answer your cry. Once you start feeling weak, as if you can't make it another day, go renew your mind and know who God is. Because supernatural strength will come upon you. In the name of Jesus, you will say, where did the strength come from? God is going to remind you because you know me. And because I don't lie and I don't fail, I got to bless you for my name's sake. I got to open doors for you for my name's sake. God's name is on the line. When blessings comes, I shield a blood protection around everybody that's here and watching. Because that's when the enemy like to show his face. So not only you're going to receive goodness, you're going to receive mercy. You can't have good things without mercy because mercy stops bad stuff from happening. No devil in hell will stop what God is doing. So you thank God for what he has done and what he's about to do. Amen? Before we leave, I know that they normally take up a seed uh, for me for ministering because I don't like talking about money. My husband normally does that in the deacons. <laughs> Let the reverend, the reverend is here. Let the reverend is here. See, Deacon Moore that came up here. Amen. I'll let him do that part. Amen. Let's praise God for the youth pastor. Amen. 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 Can we give a round of applause for our Savior, our King of Kings? Can we praise God today? For he is truly worthy to be praised. Amen. What a word on today. What a word. Can we praise God for the gift of God in, Jack, in Minister Jack and Fimbley? For providing so many practical points, um, so many points of wisdom, and even for the prophetic proclamation that you shall receive results if you know God. Amen. And so uh, right now we have the opportunity to partner with God and to sow seed back into the life of the woman of God. We have the opportunity to sow seed into the woman of God. Okay. And while um, you are preparing your seed, uh, the woman of God did pose um, that there, when you know God, when you are connected to God, that there is strength in knowing God. There is genuine strength in knowing God. The word declares that the joy of the Lord is my strength, that I have true joy in just knowing the reality of God, of knowing who God is, that knowing that I am connected to the one who made the heaven and earth. So when it comes to bills, when it comes to small worries, that ain't nothing. He created the whole cosmos. Amen. So if there's anybody who is out of the realm, if there's anybody who doesn't know God, um, I, this, I would like to extend this opportunity to be connected to God, be connected to the one who is the creator of all, to be connected to the one who gives us strength. 
standing all over the building, if there's anyone who is out of the ark of safety and wants to know God personally for themselves, this is now the opportunity to do so. If there's anybody who would like to know God for themselves, this is the opportunity to do so. And we have some come down. Oh, come on, can we praise God for these two souls today? The Bible declares that heaven rejoices when one soul comes. We have two. Can we praise God for these two souls that came on today that made the decision to reconnect to their God? Hallelujah. I know oftentimes uh, people feel that unction that, that if the preacher said it one more time, I'll give my life to God for real. I'll give my life to God for real. So this is your opportunity now. If you feel that tug, if you feel something compelling you uh, to get connected to God, to reposition your posture towards God, this is that opportunity to do so now. Amen, amen. We thank God for these two lives on today. Can we praise God for them? Follow the uh, direction of Ms. Zadie. Uh, she will take you in the back to pray for you as well as collect some information. And while we are collecting, uh, I hope you have reached way down into your purse, into your wallets, into your cash app notification. Um, And the cash out will shortly be displayed. I'm um, giving all over the building. Let's uh, partner with God and so unto the woman of God. Amen. Is there anybody happy and looking forward to the results that they're about to receive? Hey, man, the results we're about to see. I know my grandma taught me before we get ready to eat, God, we thank you for what we are about to receive. We are about to receive it. We declare that in Jesus' name for what is to come. Great things, great exploits. But this is the season that God will perform a great thing in our life. Also, if you're giving by cash up, it is dollar sign Jackie Fleming, dollar sign Jackie Fleming, if you are giving by cash up. If you are giving by cash, we have uh, our junior deacons as well as our senior deacons collecting funds. Amen.
God, may it return back into each and every giver. May it reforce the harvest. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, standing all over the building, we are ready to dismiss from this place. May that word be deeply sold into your heart. May it leave an impression that will never, ever be wiped away. So as we dismiss, lift your hands all over the building as we dismiss. God, we thank you for being the God of results. God, we thank you for being in relationship with you, God. And I pray over each and every person, may they receive favor for their faithfulness, God. We thank you right now that you are doing it in this season of their life, that you are doing things that will literally blow their mind, God. When they put something on their mind, that you will truly exceed their expectation. And God, now may the peace of God and the sweet shalom of the Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen and amen.